Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns Guitars, and today I'm going to show you how you can make a very practical and tactical home defense shotgun for less than half the price. Now the Remington 870 Tactical is one of the most practical shotguns you could ever own. The problem is, they typically retail between five and six hundred dollars in a normal economy, and today's crazy gun buying economy, they're going for eight hundred to a thousand dollars on gun brokers. So, I'm going to show you how you can make a really high quality, flawless functioning clone for about 300-ish dollars. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. Now, there are three really good shotguns that would make an excellent base model for a project like this. The Maverick 88, which is a clone of the Mossberg 500, the Stevens 320, which is a clone of the Winchester 1300, or the H&R Partner, which is what I have, which is a clone of the Remington 870. All three of these shotguns are proven to be excellent, reliable, and less expensive versions of their clones. And since I'm going after the Remington 870 Tactical specifically, the H&R Partner pump is the best choice for the job. I was able to pick this up even in today's crazy gun buying economy. I was able to pick this up at my local shop for $190. Now, obviously this thing is far from a tactical shotgun. You can see it's got a 28 inch barrel on it and it's only a five plus one capacity. So in order to turn this into a Remington 870 tactical clone, we are gonna be extending the magazine capacity. We're still gonna keep it under the legal limit for all 50 states. We're gonna be cutting down the barrel, again, keeping it legal in all 50 states, but just making it more agile and maneuverable. And then we're gonna be installing a folding stock as well, which is going to make it even better for home defense use, but you'll still be able to fold it out and use it in the field as well. And lastly, as a bonus, we're gonna install some high visibility sights as well as a flashlight and laser. So really when we're done here, we're gonna end up with something that's even better than you can get from the factory for way less than the cost. And before we get started, I wanna remind you that you are working on and operating a potentially very dangerous weapon which means if you don't feel like you have the proper skills or knowledge to do so safely, definitely have these steps performed by a qualified gunsmith. I also want to remind you that performing these modifications will definitely void any manufacturer warranties you might have, and it will also prevent you from being able to send this gun to the manufacturer for repairs. So with all that being said, it is very important that you function check your firearm before making any of these modifications, because if anything is wrong from the factory, you want it fixed now, not afterwards when the factory will no longer accept your firearm for repairs. Testing out the shotgun, making sure it works. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now that we've gone ahead and verified that the firearm functions properly, we're gonna start by extending the magazine capacity. I'm gonna do that using a Wilson Combat Plus Two magazine extension. This firearm comes from the factory with a five plus one round capacity. We're gonna extend it to a seven plus one round capacity, which is still 50 state legal. We're just gonna get the max capacity that we can out of it. Of course, whenever you're handling a firearm, it's always best practice to make sure that you are unloaded, check visually and physically. And even though it's unloaded, make sure you're always pointed in a safe direction. Now for this modification, just to be extra safe, I am actually gonna go ahead and remove the barrel entirely. That way there is no question whether or not this firearm is safe to handle or not. Now to remove the magazine spring and follower, we push this in right here with the flathead screwdriver, do a quarter of a turn, and that will release it. We got our spring and our follower should come out as well. Now one thing that's kind of a pain about these 870s and 870 colognes is that they have little dimples right here that hold your equipment inside unless you get it in the right direction. So I just got to line these up with those dimples. And that's actually something that we're going to have to remove in the next step. There, we got our follower out. Perfect. So like I said, we have these dimples in the barrel and we're going to have to grind those off from the inside in order for this new extension tube to work properly. Now for this task specifically, I'm going to be using a Dremel with a flex shaft kit and a small sanding drum. Now you definitely don't need this kind of equipment for the task. It's just gonna make it a lot faster and easier. You can use just regular sandpaper wrapped around a pencil or a round file if you happen to have one, but this is gonna be a little bit faster and I believe a little bit more graceful. All right, those little dimples feel pretty non-existent. I'll go ahead and give you a close up so you can see what I'm talking about. All right nice and smooth inside there now. So now to finish this up smooth, this sanding wheel is about 120 grit. So I'm gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper and 
just kind of smooth it up. The point is just to get off any burrs or any rough pieces of metal stuck in there that might cause a hang up. Thought about going to 320, decided to just go ahead and skip to 400. Again, it's not going for super pretty, just going for super smooth and functional. All right, that feels nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and go up to 600. That is smooth. That is smoother than the rest of the inside of the magazine tube. I think that's gonna do great. We'll call it good. All right, let's clean out as much of that grime as I can with just some cotton patches. All right, now we're gonna run my boar snake through. All right. Perfect. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall my barrel. All right. And of course, wanna make sure that we are still empty. Now, we're gonna install our extension. Follow our first. Amazing spring. And then our extension. Make sure that new spring gets stuffed down in there without binding. Twist that sucker on there. Good and tight. See the new follower in there? I actually don't really care for this sling mount. I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it or not. All right, so off camera just now, I loaded this thing to capacity and just dry cycled it five times in a row. And five times out of five, it cycled every round reliably. So we are definitely good to go here. That's the good news. The bad news is this is supposed to be a plus two extension. When I loaded this thing to capacity, it actually took eight shells instead of seven. Now I know for a fact this was five plus one because I took it out and fired it. And so adding a plus two extension should have made it seven plus one, but it in fact made it eight plus one. And maybe the plus two rating on this is for three inch rounds. So I don't know how different states are gonna calculate the magazine capacity if they're gonna use two and three quarter or three inch shells, but I really wanted this thing to be 50 state legal since I do so much traveling in my motorhome. Now, the federal minimum requirement for a shotgun barrel length is 18 inches. Now, they don't specify whether that's 18 inches total length of the barrel, because part of this barrel goes down into the receiver, um, or if they expect it to be 18 inches from where it protrudes from the receiver. So, you just wanna make sure, just to be safe, that you're measuring from where it protrudes from the receiver with it installed properly. You wanna make sure you're at least 18 inches. Most people, most manufacturers go 18 and a half just to be safe. And as you can see, my magazine extension goes well beyond 18 inches. So we're gonna be cutting it. Let's see, it looks like my extension ends at about 20 and three quarters. So I'm gonna probably cut it somewhere around 20 and seven eighths or 21, uh, just so that I have some room to kind of grind it down even without going shorter than my barrel extension. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape that off and then we'll remove the barrel and cut it down. And that's really just a general placeholder all squared up once I remove the barrel. Now, as you can see, I obviously did not do a very good job taping this off square. So let's go ahead and square it up now. The cool thing about cutting down a shotgun barrel versus a rifle barrel is that there's no rifling inside that we have to worry about crowning. Because with a rifle barrel, because the gas flows through that rifling to twist the bullet, you need to make sure that the gas leaves every single portion of the rifling at the exact same time. So not having a perfectly trued cut barrel and properly crowned barrel will result in terrible accuracy. But with the shotgun, we got a smooth bore. We don't have to worry about that. So we can just grind it down as flat as we possibly can, and it shouldn't mess with our pattern anymore. much. Got a grinder with a cutoff wheel, and I know that I'm not gonna cut it perfectly square on my first pass. So once it's cut just above the blue tape, I will get my grinding wheel and we'll grind it down square. All right, clearly not square, but I've got it set up about as plumb as I possibly can. So we're gonna square it up now with the grinding wheel, and then I will check with a real square to make sure that we are square all the way around. Now, angle grinder, orbital sander, excellent tools that I think everyone should own, but if you don't own those tools, no problem. A hacksaw and just a regular sanding block will get the job done just as well. It's just gonna take a little longer. So, if you can cheat, you may as well. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Using these same little scraps of sandpaper, I'm going to deburr. All right, 
That was 120, let's step it up to 220. And this step right here, you guys, is exactly why you wanna cut a little bit more than you actually want, because while I'm not removing a whole lot, I am removing some. So if you were to cut your barrel right at 18 inches and then sand it down, you'd be in trouble legally. All right, going up to, I believe this is 400, all right. Now, one of the reasons why I'm polishing this is because I'm not planning on putting a finish coat over this to protect it from rust. You could, you know, spray some Cerakote or something on this, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna polish it up, get as many of those little micro scratches out as possible. And then I'm gonna just make sure that when I'm cleaning it and lubricating it, that I am always putting just a little bit of oil up here. All right, Dremel with a polishing wheel, some brown polishing compound. Look at how beautiful and shiny, perfectly polished that is. All right, let's go ahead and reinstall this thing and see how she looks with her new barrel. Gosh, that looks beautiful. That looks professional. I am happy with that, very happy. Actually, before I do that, let's run a boar snake through it just to make sure it's perfectly clean. Now, one of the reasons why I spent so much time making sure this was as square as possible is even though it doesn't really matter with a smooth bore shotgun, I do want to, um, tap and thread the inside of that at some point to be able to use uh, various chokes for various tasks. So because this isn't just going to be a home defense shotgun, this is going to be a multi-purpose survival shotgun. So surviving in your home, also surviving in the wilderness, a 21 inch barrel will be more than adequate velocity to take any size game with the proper ammunition and choke. So. This is going to be an awesome firearm when I'm all said and done. Now, doesn't that look a whole lot more tactical? Very cool. I'm happy with this. This is turning out great. Well, so far, this project is going so well, why don't we go ahead and just keep moving along? Here. I have an ATI top folding stock. I got this directly from ATI, from their website. I believe I paid $75 for it. And so it is a proud fit for a Remington 870, as well as the Mossberg 500 or the Winchester 1300. So um, regardless of what base model you started with, this should work. Now, remember, it's for a Remington 870, and this technically is not a Remington 870. And if I can ever figure out how this package opens, uh, we'll find out if it will fit without modification or not. Good grief. Who are they trying to keep out of this? Well, I hope it fits because I just destroyed the packaging. All right. Perfect. Now, as you can see, there is quite a bit of a gap right there. So I think I am gonna go ahead and sand down the inside of this. Looks like I only need to take off maybe a 16th of an inch. That way I can get this to mate up perfectly and that'll move that close enough. It won't be, won't be a perfect looking fit, but it'll be close enough. And of course we'll be sanding it the Dan Thompson way, which is just the wrong way, but faster. There we go. That is a much better fit. No more gaps there on either side. Perfect. All right, for sights, I got these sweet True Glow fiber optic high visibility sights. These are the Gobble Dots. These got great Amazon reviews. And I'm definitely gonna do the front sight post. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do the rear sights or not. That depends on, I don't know. I still wanna be able to shoot clays with this thing and that might slow me down. It's definitely more for turkey hunting, so definitely come in handy. These, as you can see, come with a 3M adhesive backing. Uh, I don't think that I'm gonna use that because I'm not sure that I would trust that. So I think I'm probably gonna attach it with some JB Weld. Just gonna clean both surfaces with some alcohol real quick. Make sure we are dirt and oil free. Now we're just gonna use a little teeny tiny bit. We're gonna center it as much as possible 
on top of these vent ribs. And it looks like it's just gonna sit perfectly inside one groove on each side. So that'll help us get it nice and straight. So that's great. Now we'll take our paper towel. Before we press that on there, we're gonna wipe off the excess on both sides. Right in between those two lines, like I said. And that looks just about perfect. Okay. Now I'm gonna carefully wipe away the excess. Let's tape her down so she can set up overnight. Let's go ahead and remove this barrel so we can keep working on this sucker. While well, that sets up overnight. That is gonna be perfectly centered. And it's gonna look just beautiful. All right, going for bonus points here. I'm just gonna put on this little one inch uh, ring tactical piece of rail. Uh, I got this, I think on eBay, I don't know, forever ago, for maybe three or four dollars. And I'm doing that so that I can install a weapon light and a laser. I'm opting to do that as opposed to installing a red dot optic because I think it's more practical in a home defense situation to have a weapon light and laser, especially with a top folding stock, shooting from the hip would be very beneficial. So I'll go ahead and click that on there. It is a pistol light, so activating it is not as awesome as I'd like it to be, but um, I'll just use that until I get something different or better. And yeah, man, I can't wait to see what this thing looks like tomorrow morning altogether. All right, guys, it's range day. I've been putting this day off for a while because the weather has been so freaking cold, hoping that it would get a little bit warmer. But that's unfortunately not the case. According to my watch, it is 18 degrees outside, so this is gonna be a very quick range trip. Um, but I wanted you to see how awesome my JB Weld job turned out on that front sight. I mean, it looks factory. You don't see any globs of JB Weld anywhere and it's on there rock solid. Now, I did end up adding the rear sights, but I did not JB Weld them. I just used the included 3M tape, which means it could potentially fall off while I'm test firing it. But I didn't wanna I'm not sure if I wanna keep them, you know? I told you in the beginning, I still wanna be able to use this gun for shooting clay birds and stuff, and I just don't know if I'll be able to do that with these. So I just wanted to try it out first. And then I also wanted to, you know, I wanna make sure that it's aligned properly with the front sight so that it's on target. And once I JB weld it, it's gonna be on there for the rest of its life. So obviously I wanted to do that. But look how freaking cool this thing is. Is this thing rad or what? I am very happy with how this thing turned out. Also, I'm not in my favorite spot for shooting today. I can't throw clay targets here. So all I have is a stack of tires to shoot into as my backstop. So I'm just gonna hang some steel gongs real quick and then we're gonna test the function of this thing. Make sure it's shooting, make sure it's shooting on target. Just have to show you guys these new targets that I got real quick. You guys have seen my dope gongs before? You know, when you hit the bullseye, you're like, oh man, that's dope. But check out these sweet new guys I got from Shooting Target 7. We're gonna be having a dedicated review video for these coming up soon. But they just sit right on top of the T-Posts and they just really complete your cheap budget T-Post steel gong setup. Uh, they make it look so much more professional and uh, really inexpensive too. So I'm super excited for these. Also, after further research, I realized that I'm actually good with the eight plus one capacity of this thing in all 50 states. That seven round limit is actually for semi-auto shotguns. There's no regulations in most states on total round capacity of pump action shotguns. I think the one exception is New York where uh, it's okay if you have a capacity to hold more than seven, you just can't store it with more than seven rounds in it. I think, I don't know, not legal advice. Anyway, it's really actually the pistol grip that's gonna get me in trouble, I think, in most states. So I'm gonna hold on to the shoulder stock to make sure this thing stays 50 state legal. All right, that was all eight without issue. Oh no, I didn't even realize it, but my light fell off. Oh, I guess this little pistol light is not up to the recoil of a 12 gauge shotgun. Um, believe it or not, I actually had this light fall off of a pistol, which is why I'm not using it. And looks like cool. it's gonna, looks like it's gonna be the same issue here. So yeah. I'm afraid I just can't recommend this Olight Balder Mini. I really wanted to like it, but yeah. I'll be on a search for a different weapon laser combo. Well guys, definitely been fun. 50 rounds through this thing. And uh, it's a champion. Seems like it patterns really well. Um, shoots really good. Definitely much lighter, faster target acquisition. 
love the eight plus one capacity. I feel like I just shoot forever. And I'm pleasantly surprised that this rear sight stayed on the whole time. Um, I'm still not sure if I like it yet. I think it does slow me down more than it helps me for now. I think it's definitely better for like long range turkey shots and uh, I don't know, hunting with buckshot or slugs maybe. Um, but yeah, as far as just self-defense tactical stuff, and I'm assuming hitting clay birds out of the air is gonna be a little bit harder too with that rear sight. So still haven't decided yet. I still gotta try shooting clay birds, but unfortunately, like I said, can't do that here or today. And it's freezing cold, so I'm gonna go home. I will definitely do a range update when I have an opportunity to throw some clays with this thing. And uh, if you wanna see that, definitely hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. I'll see you in that next video.